Hello everyone, this is a small bonus for the lesson 3.1, which is a question that Julieta asked, Julieta from group uh, group 4, and is the following, why is the product of the slopes of two perpendicular lines equal to minus 1, which is, if you remember well, that was the test that we used in order to know whether two lines were perpendicular. If we had line 1 and line 2, and if we knew that their slopes, when you multiply them, m1 times m2, if you knew that that was equal to minus 1, then you could be sure that those two lines were perpendicular. So this is a test. But why is this so? Why, it, why if we know that m1 times m2, the multiplication of the slopes, is equal to minus 1, why does that help me? know that they are perpendicular. Okay, let's see. We're going to work in reverse. We're going to first assume that we have two perpendicular lines. In this case, line 1 and line 2, they are perpendicular. And that means that all of these angles, guys, this and this and this and this, each of these angles is 90 degrees. So this is an angle of 90 degrees. And therefore, this big triangle in here is a right triangle. Okay, so memorize that. This is the right triangle, and this is this is its right angle. Because I wanna I wanna erase it for the moment. Okay, the first thing you have to notice is this, guys. The slope of L1, which we're gonna call M1, obviously, and the slope of L2, which we're gonna call M2. First of all, they have to be of different sides. If one is positive, the other has to be negative. For, per for perpendicular lines, that's going to be the case. If, for example, in this case, according to this diagram, the slope of L1 is positive because uh, as you go from left to right, you're, uh, you're going up in, in, the, in the height, so to speak, and, and, the, and the slope for L2 will be negative because as you move, along the line from left to right, you're actually going downwards, okay? So the, slo the slope of this is positive and the slope of this is negative. And that's the case for any two pair, any two pa any, any pair of, of perpendicular lines, that's gonna be the case. For example, in here, let me draw another example. What if they do look like so instead? You have this line here and this perpendicular, you see? It's the same. This line is going up, so the slope is positive. This line is going down, so the slope is negative. Okay? So the slopes of, of any two perpendicular lines have to be of different sides. It doesn't matter how, I mean, you can try this a thousand, a million times, and you will always get the same. Always. This is a this is certain line. This is its perpendicular. You see? The slope of this is positive, the slope of this is negative. And any any other pair is gonna be the same. So what can we agree on right, right from the start? Well, that if I multiply the slopes of two perpendicular lines, the multiplication has to be of negative sign. Why? Because when I multiply m1 times m2, Okay, since one is positive and the other is negative, then the result, whatever the result is, must be negative. Okay, can we agree on that? Okay, so that's the first thing. The product of these two things is going to be negative. We don't know yet what number it's going to be, but we know that it must be negative. Okay, perfect. So that is the first step in, the, in this proof. So we have already proven that that thing has has to be minus okay now let's go with the one why is this why is the product gonna be equal to one in magnitude so let's see let's see okay we're gonna help ourselves with this triangle right here remember it's a right triangle and also with the with the concept of the slope of a line. Okay, for example, 
let's look at L1. L1. And let's go from this point to this point. Okay? Let's suppose you're, you're going uphill. So basically, when you go from this point to this point along L1, you are undertaking this run, which I'm going to represent in yellow in an, a little uh, greater thickness. You're undergoing this run. Okay, up until here, this is the run. When you go from this point to this point, you take this run. Okay, and let's call that run, uh, run one, because it's the run of L1. And what was your rise? Let's do that in red. What's gonna be the rise? The rise is this, you see? The rise is this. And if you notice, by going over the run, and the rise, oh, by the way, let me call the rise, let me call it H. Why am I got, Why am I calling it H and not also R? Because I don't want to get confused with this. Since this is a run and run rise have the same starting letter, I'm going to kill, I'm going to call this, this rise H for height, so to speak, okay? So, basically, we have this run, we have this rise, and I also produced another right triangle. This is a right triangle because these two lines are perpendicular, clearly. And let me actually state that, properly speaking. There you go. This is a right triangle. Perfect. And let me do the same for L2. Let me do the same for L2. When you go along L2, from this point to this point, what is your rise? I'm sorry, what is your run? Your run is also this little segment okay and remember the run always run <laughs> the run always runs from left to right so let's call this a rise too and it's um it's rise is the same as this a red one okay but in the opposite direction okay it's going downwards when you go from this point to this point you go downwards this much okay and, but I'm not going to represent that by a, by a downwards arrow. I just care about the magnitude, so to speak. And one more time. This is a... This is a right triangle. Okay? So we have this right triangle. We have this other right triangle. The largest triangle, this one, the big one, is also a right triangle. And this is its right angle okay let me call this side and this side let me call them x and y there you go so we have all of this configuration this big diagram it took us a little time to to draw it and let me tell you why it's important with this diagram i can demonstrate that the multiplication of the slope of m1 and the multiplication of the slope of m2 has to be equal to one in magnitude in magnitude okay how do we do that we're gonna do this number two let me separate here how do we do that we do this i'm gonna make use of the pythagorean theorem three times one for this uh triangle one for this triangle and one for once for this for the biggest triangle so i'm gonna do this look for this first triangle if I write its Pythagoras theorem, it should look like this. It's going to look R1 squared plus H squared. It's going to be equal to the hypotenuse, which is X to the square. And let me call this equation, let's call it equation A. Okay, now I'm going to write also the Pythagoras theorem pertaining to this triangle over here. So that's going to be R2 squared plus H squared equals its hypotenuse to the square. And let me call this equation B. Always label your equations. And for the largest triangle, which is this one, I can also write its proper Pythagoras theorem. In this case, what are the cathedi? The cathedi are X and y 
and this is its hypotenuse. You see? So let me let's write down the Pythagoras theorem. It's gonna be x squared plus y squared equals all of this thing, all of this thing to the square. And all of this thing is, as you can see, R1 plus R2. So R1 plus R2 to the square. And let me call this equation C. Okay, perfect. So I have laid down three Pythagoras theorems, each for each of these triangles. And by, I, I, I always tell you this, guys, by playing, by playing with these equations, I can demonstrate what I wanted to demonstrate. That the multiplication of these two slopes, m1 and m2, will be equal to 1 in magnitude. How does that work? It works in this way. First of all, what is m1? m1 is rise over the run of the first line, r1. Okay, And if you remember, the rise was called h. So let me, let me put h in here. This is by definition the slope of L1. It's rise, which is H, over run, which is R1. That's why I'm writing this. And the same for the slope two. It's gonna be rise, which is H, in magnitude, in magnitude. I know that the rise is negative, but I'm just considering the magnitude in absolute value. And uh, over the run, which is R2. Okay, so this is the this is the slope one, this is the slope two. Now let's multiply them together. Then m1 times m2 will be equal to um, the following h times r1 times h over r2. I, I think I mispronounced this h over r1 times h over r2, which is gonna be equal to h squared over r1 times r2, so basically m1 times m2 is equal to h squared, or the rise to the square, over the multiplication of the runs. Okay, keep this on ice. We're going to use this in a moment. Okay, so if I'm pretending to say, if I'm supposing to say that m1 times m2 should be equal to 1, then uh, I should... I should be getting that R1 times R2 should be the same as I as H squared, right? If if all of this thing, all of this thing is the same as H squared, then H squared over H squared is gonna be equal to one, and I'm gonna be completed with my proof. Okay, so let's actually demonstrate that the multiplication of R1 times R2, which are these two runs, is gonna be equal to H squared. And how do we do that? By playing with these equations, all of them simultaneously, all of them simultaneously. Here we go. I'm going to make another division. I have this division here. I'm going to make another division, and I hope that everything fits in here. Okay, so let's, let's do it, guys. Here it goes. If you notice, I have three equations, A, B, and C. And they have uh, three variables. We have x, y. No, we have more than three variables. We have x, y, h, r1, and r2. Okay. So I'm going to use equation C. And if you notice, in here we have x squared. And x squared is over here. And it's equal to all of this. So in this part of the equation C, in x squared, I'm going to replace it for this which is the same as x squared. So let's start. I'm going to write taking taking the equation C. I can write x squared, which is all of this, r1 to the square plus h to the square. You see? All of this is x squared. And then we have a plus, plus, and then we have y squared, but y squared is right here. And it's equal to all of this. So I'm going to replace it. R2 to the square plus H to the square. Okay. And then we have an equal sign. And then we have this. 
and that's going to be kept in the same way. R1 plus R2 to the square. Okay, so we have this equation, guys. We have this equation. Now, let's uh, simplify it, or let's, for example, let's raise this binomial to the square. And in here we can simplify because we have, uh, we can drop the parentheses. The parentheses are not important anymore. This can go away. And as you can see, we have 2, two h squared. So I can do this. We have r1 squared plus r2 to the square plus 2 times h squared. And on the right side, we can develop or expand this binomial and we get r1 to the square plus 2 times r1 r2 plus r2 to the square. And we have this resulting equation. Okay, I observe it. I realize that I have R1 squared on both sides of the equation, so I can cancel it. You see? And the same for R2 to the square. This one goes away with this one. And what am I left with? With this. 2H squared equals 2 R1 times R2. And since I also have uh, a factor of 2 in both sides of the equation, I can also cancel it. And what have I discovered? We have discovered that h squared is equal to the multiplication of r1 times r2. You see, we have discovered this. And if we put this back in here, guys, Look, the multiplication of our slopes, m1 times m2, was equal to h squared over r1 times r2. But r1 times r2 is equal to h squared. So what is the obvious conclusion? The obvious conclusion is that this is going to be equal to h squared over h squared, which is equal to 1. That's what I wanted to find, that the multiplications, I'm sorry, the, the product of m1 times m2, is equal to 1 in magnitude. Okay, so that's it. That completes the proof. We knew before that the multiplication was going to be negative, and now we know that their multiplication in magnitude, like uh, the, the, the number itself, is going to be 1. Okay, so what is the conclusion? The conclusion is m1 times m2, when my two lines are perpendicular, the product of their slopes has to be negative from here and also equal to 1. That's it. This completes the proof. So, Julieta, there you have. And anything, anybody interested in this uh, demonstration, here is why. And so, how much time did, did that take me? Um, 18 minutes. So, you can see why, guys, you know... I don't demonstrate all the all the theorems and all the facts in, in the normal class because it, it takes me, if, if I want to do it properly, if I want to do it with care and in a good way so that you understand what's happening as much as possible, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. And so some things I just tell you, um, take this for granted or just, just believe me that the multiplication of two slopes when those slopes are uh, from perpendicular lines, the multiplication is minus 1. Well, now you know why, okay? And, you know, when you have doubts like this, like if I just tell you something and I don't give you any reason for it, if you are curious enough, you can ask me, okay? You can ask me to do, like, these types of bonus. I'm, I'm very happy to do them for you as long as I have time. I'm very happy to do them for you, okay? Don't think that, that you're bothering me or anything. I like to do this stuff, and I like you to learn. I like you to learn why things are true. Okay? So now you know. Thank you so much, guys, and see you later.